Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity. I'm home, honey. Good morning, everyone. Today is going to be a busy day. In just minutes, we have a carpet installer coming who's going to be redoing the steps in our home. It's been years, almost 20 years, since we first had that carpet put in when we built the house, and years of wear and abuse have left marks in it. But today's the day it's getting fixed. I also have to go downtown to my watch repair person and get a beautiful World War II issued Rolex observatory fixed. Um, it's kind of stopping and starting, so we'll get that fixed up mail out some toys, and then we'll see what comes in the store today. I'm sure it's going to be a busy day. I thought I'd take you guys along for the adventure and see what happens. So follow me. Well, the car is clean at least. I have to go get a box still after this, but I just got a call from Melissa that the carpet guys brought the wrong color carpeting and I was going through my paperwork, which happens to be here in the car. And they, we paid for a sort of a charcoal gray color and they bought like a cream color, which is what we want to avoid because it shows the dirt. Uh, I'm gonna have to phone uh, Home Depot and try and get this all sorted out, hopefully soon. This carpet being messed up is kind of a, uh, well, it's kind of becoming a problem because we only have so many days that we can be at home to get that done. I was really hoping to go home and have nice brand new carpeting in the steps, but I guess that might not happen today. Well, I'll keep my fingers crossed and hope they can sort it out. Um, I'm off to go get a cardboard box to go to the post office with and mail off those old press steel toys that I got from a previous video uh, to a gentleman out in the east coast of Canada. Uh, and then I have to try and make it downtown in the next half an hour to go to the watch place to get my watch repaired. Busy, busy morning. Looks like the lottery just went up. The watch repair place opens up in about 20 minutes, so I've got some time to kill. I've been packing up some of the toys, getting those ready to ship out. I uh, wish I had some tape and a marker, I could finish that, but I'll do that when I get back to the store. But this is the watch which I need to get repaired. Which watch is that? This watch. Um, it is a World War II, 1942 era. Uh, it is called the Rolex Oyster Royal Observatory. Now these were a good quality watch. Your average soldier wouldn't really have access to this, but you could go into the Canex, which is like the military store on base, and you could opt to buy one of these watches if you wanted to upgrade the one on your wrist. Now this watch is a fair bit smaller than what you might see on even uh, late 1960s watch like the Seiko I have on. Um, this is considered what they call like a boy's size watch, but that was typical for a man to wear back in that day. They were more durable. Um, they had a smaller crystal, so they were less likely to get shattered or broken if you were in, uh, in battle. Um, and this one has the luminescent dial, the um, Arabic numeral, the you can see the, the one to 12 on there rather than just having little dashes. Uh, so it's a good military watch, but it needs some work. It's been stopping and starting and not working properly. And uh, these guys are the ones that are going to fix it up for me. One thing you look for on a Rolex watch like this is, does it have its original crown? Now this does, it's the, uh, if I can get it to focus on it. It is the uh, Oyster Patent Crown, which is original this watch. It's got a little bit of wear on it, but I'm going to see if we can save it because it's nice to have all the original pieces. Uh, what makes a good Oyster case and um, many of you watching who are into Rolexes probably know this already. The back screws on with a special spline threaded back. You need a Rolex tool to open that. And the uh, the other big thing that you get on a watch like this is that this, the crown screws down and it has a watertight seal, making this a very um, dust proof and uh, water resistant watch, far and above better than what most watches were back at that time. And that's why uh, one of the reasons why Rolex is expensive today. Uh, we're gonna get this watch uh, in for a pair and I just so happen to have a box for this watch at my store that wasn't for this, but to, I mean, it's for this exact style watch, but um, 
I'm now I have the the watch to go with the box. It worked out just perfect. Although I can't read the sign, I haven't learned Chinese yet. Um, they do a wonderful job on repairing watches. I've been coming here for probably about 10 years or so. Great place, great prices, wonderful craftsmanship, and I'm looking forward to getting this baby back in good working order. While I was at the watch repair shop, I picked up a watch that I had there too. This is a Royal Canadian Air Force. You can kind of see where it says RCAF. This was a pilot's watch issued during the Second World War. It was in pieces. It came from that ambulance full of watches that I purchased. And um, it is now working and looking great. And I can get that out on the shelf. And then I noticed that uh, the mailman came by and brought a whole bunch of mail. So we're going to go through and some of these look like they're Christmas cards. This one comes to us from Debbie Vaughn in Fairhope, Alabama. It got to us uh, today. I appreciate all the uh, the kind cards and messages. I won't show the other ones right now because I don't want to give away um, your addresses here, which I almost did, uh, but from Mary Scott in Dallas uh, and a bill from one of my suppliers. That's not as fun when you have to pay bills, but I guess that happens every once in a while too. I'll open some of these guys up and uh, yeah, show you what came in. Well, I ended up getting some nice Pen sent for Stephen, but we're gonna give those to him. I got a fun little t-shirt sent in the mail and some lovely Christmas cards. So thank you all for sending such nice warm letters. And the previous owners brought me um, some information. They have all the titles on my building going back to 1908. And I could see um, the land being sold and it's uh, farmland at that time. And then it's being subdivided from somebody in Illinois who was an investor, obviously, and then they, they sold all this property. So here I have all the copies of title going back on my property almost 100 years. Really neat stuff that came in today. I snuck away because I still have a couple final errands that I have to run today, but I brought a special helper with me. Ba -da 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 -da. The one and only Jason. Yes. And I told him if he helped me out today, he'd get to keep the money from the bottle depot. I don't know what it's like in your area, but they charge a deposit on the bottles. And if you save them all up, you get some money back. And it's good motivation for kids to come help you out, right, Jason? Yes. Um, I think it's this one. That's the one here. You can take this one, Jason. You got the bin? Okay. Then we're going to the eco station after this to return all these paint cans I've had around the garage from the many renovations we've done this year. And now we wait for our turn. Okay. Right there, you gotta dump it on the counter. As long as you're not getting employees. Oh no, no, it's just him. Starts to add up. Okay, Jason, so how did you do at the Bottle Depot today? Uh, I got $9.15. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Good for helping out Dad. All right, now let's go to the next stop. Here we are at the Edmonton Eco Station where you can recycle electronics, use paint, they make sure it gets uh, safely disposed of, and uh, they typically don't charge you anything. We're going to offload a whole bunch of household paint and probably get rid of about five tons worth of material out of the trunk of this car. There's a lot of paint back there. The last stop today was at Michael's to pick up a picture frame for an old hockey picture that I have. Well, I am glad to be home. It was a long day. Glad I had my little helper Jason with me too. And got my picture all put in my frame and it looks nice. I actually have that trophy that's right in that picture sitting at the store. So this will be nice. I'll put this in the showcase with it. It's nice to have a uh, companion piece. 1932 Bond Silvertown Aces. Very early uh, minor league hockey team and uh, it's nice to get the trophy and everything. So very productive day. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to do so. We have lots of interesting things going on, um, whether it's building houses or fixing antiques or, or just going out and having fun. Appreciate you guys all coming along for these journeys with us. You have a wonderful day and a happy new year to you. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.